Hello everyone, today's video is about whether or not it's safe to use ozone therapy or indicated to use ozone therapy during the cell danger response. Um, just before jumping into the video, if you don't mind taking a quick moment to please like, share, subscribe, and or post a quick comment on the video, I'd really appreciate it. So thanks you, thank you in advance for taking a second to do that. And as per usual, nothing I'm saying should be construed as medical advice. This is for informational purposes only. And if you need medical advice, please help your, or please ask your healthcare provider to provide that advice for you. So it's been been a long day, been doing a lot of talking, not the best time to make a video, but it's the only time that I have in my day to make a video. So, so here we are. So uh, please, uh, uh, thank you for uh, your patience with these technical difficulties. So somebody posted a video or a question rather on one of my other videos that was a recent one about ozone therapy and uh, whether it's an antioxidant or a pro-oxidative therapy. Um, and so the comment says, um, uh, might ozone uh, might ozone be contraindicated when the cell danger response or hemochromatosis is part of the picture? I've got excessive oxidative stress and antioxidants uh, seem very oxidative, uh, B vitamin and ribose sensitive. I recently told I'm in CDR or cell danger response. Um, <clears throat> so uh, thank you for the question and you know really good question. I mean the cell danger response is, is really fascinating. Uh, when I first heard about it a number of years ago um, it just uh, really helped to, uh, it, it, it was providing me with this beautiful framework to have a better understanding of what the heck was going on with all these patients who are suffering from complex chronic illnesses, especially when labels like chronic fatigue slash uh, um, myalgic encephalomyelitis are afoot, uh, fibromyalgia, you know, chronic Lyme, mold illness, etc. The cell danger response is just this you know beautiful model to um, help kind of explain that or explain a lot of the pathophysiology underlying it. Uh, for folks who aren't familiar, the cell danger response was um, uh, put forward by this uh, researcher named Dr. Robert Navio um, a number of years ago. And anyways, lots of, uh, you know, he's done uh, various interviews. Lots of people talk about the cell danger response in the complex chronic illness world. Um, and so with the cell danger response, to my understanding, it's kind of gone from the cell danger response to different um, phases of the cell danger response and that uh, it's not that the entire body is in, like every cell in the body is in the cell danger response at the same time. Certain cells might not be in the cell danger response. Certain ones would be in cell danger response type one, type two, or type three. Um, and so it's really this, um, um, it's, it's more complicated than just, you know, I'm in CDR or I'm not in CDR. Um, and so when it comes to ozone, you know, it's a really good question to say, would ozone be contraindicated in certain phases of the CDR or maybe every single phase of the CDR um, and it's, it's a very good question to ask because um, timing is everything in many facets of life including with you know which treatments are we going to use when where and, and all of that um, so with ozone um, in my opinion and to my understanding um, ozone is really indicated at every phase of the CDR of the cell danger response whether it's stage you know one two or three um, that's really handy because as just mentioned um, there uh, the body different cells in the body can be in different stages of the CDR at a given time um, the reason that I say that it is indicated in my opinion in all stages is because ozone is just so darn versatile um, you know it's, it's anti-inflammatory it is a pro-oxidant but it has uh, it leads to a reflexive antioxidant production um, in the tissues of the body. It helps to support the mitochondria. It helps the tissue oxygenation. It's um, um, immunomodulating. It's antimicrobial. So it does all these things that are, um, it has all these different functions. And depending on which stage of uh, the CDR a patient is in or the majority of their cells are in, then ozone, in my opinion, has something to offer for everyone. It's kind of, you know, everybody's, be everybody's buddy, um, which I know sounds kind of like, ah, oh, it sounds little too good to be true but ozone is is one of those things that's just on the list of almost too good to be true it's just so versatile and what it can help with um, that's why so many folks clinicians like myself who have been using ozone therapy for many many moons now um, really really like it and you know rank it in our top you know 10 list, top five list, top three list of favorite therapies. Um, the reason that I say that CD, or, um, ozone therapy is indicated in all the different phases of the cell danger response um, is, is as follows. So in the cell danger response uh, phase one, or, or type one, I should say, to my understanding, the main goals of the um, the therapeutic goals at that point are to, you know, kill off the microbes that are putting the body into that cell danger response or detoxifying the toxins, whether it's, you know, mycotoxins or heavy metals or um, environmental toxins that are basically putting the body into that cell danger response one mode. And um, ozone, again, helps to kill microbes, helps to 
can promote tissue oxygenation, boost up mitochondrial function. So liver cells, kidney cells, et cetera, are going to be able to work better, help with those detox pathways, help with tissue healing, help with the immunomodulation to help um, mitigate the negative effects from those mycotoxins, the negative effects on the immune system from the microbes that might be driving that CDR1 um, picture. So um, CDR1 plus ozone makes a lot of sense, good fit on paper. Um, CDR2, um, to my understanding, that's where the uh, cells are starting to get more into like, you know, replenishing, rejuvenation mode. They're kind of getting into more of like a hyperplasia mode, starting to kind of get their affairs in order again. Um, and in that case, great, ozone, let's bring it on because we want the ozone there to help uh, stimulate the production of more of those antioxidants to have nice healthy cell membranes. To, uh, we want the um, oxygen to ramp up those mitochondria so that they're able to start making more energy again. Um, and so it's it can be a good fit for CDR2 uh, as well. Um, and then with CDR3, which to my understanding has mostly to do with reintegrating the cells into the body as a whole, kind of in, um, uh, reintegrating the kind of the organism, um, then ozone can be helpful in that regard too, because again, it has that immunomodulating capacity, helps us support the mitochondria. Mitochondria, we need them at, at every phase of, of the CDR, in my opinion, and the healing process, um, and um, helps with the antioxidant production, et cetera. It just basically helps to augment um, a lot of the core um, basic physiological activities that are needed in the body. Um, and so it, it's, in my opinion, indicated in CDR3 as well. Um, <clears throat> so sort of a, a devil's advocate here would say, well, okay, that all sounds well and good. You spin a good yarn there, but you know, what, a, what do we actually see in clinical practice? And, and so my sort of answer to that would be, well, ozone therapy, you know, assuming we're talking about intravenous ozone therapy or maybe rectal insufflations of ozone therapy, which is the other main way that um, ozone is administered systemically, um, it's generally one of the best tolerated treatments uh, in patients across the board. Um, I've seen far more people flare up from, you know, Myers cocktails, which are intravenous nutrient infusions, or more patients flaring from just, you know, taking a multivitamin or taking this or that herb or this or that binder than I have from intravenous ozone therapy. So even though it's IV, it's generally very, very, very very well tolerated um, and I've used ozone therapy either directly when I used to run my own IVs once upon a time or now by proxy because I refer the my resident refer IV patients to my residents because I don't have time to run IVs myself uh, as I haven't for many years. But the uh, feedback that I get from patients is that, yeah, I'm, I'm tolerating it well. And oftentimes it's a helpful therapy. Um, if it was something that was inappropriate to use at any given phase of the CDR, um, then I would be hearing clinically that like, oh yeah, a bunch of patients flare from this. It's, you know, maybe not flaring all the time, but I'd be seeing a heck of a lot more flare ups, worsenings, that kind of thing. Um, if the ozone, if ozone therapy was not indicated at certain phases of the CDR. So in my opinion, I think that um, it is indicated at every phase of the cell danger response. And that that is my opinion on that. And um, if anybody, and no, no, I should say, I was going to say, if anybody has any, uh, you know, experience with this, whether like, yes, it helped with me, me at this or that stage of the CDR or ozone flared me up like crazy or whatever, please post in the comment section. I'd be interested to hear what other folks have to say. Uh, I, I, what I was then going to say after uh, almost interrupting myself on that was I, I certainly have had some patients who have flared from ozone. So I'm not saying that ozone, you know, intravenous ozone doesn't cause flare ups. It does in some patients, but it's just very, very uncommon um, in my experience. And so that's why I'm saying that I, I don't think that it's um, contraindicated in any given phase of the cell danger response. Um, again, another devil's advocate might say, well, you know, with the cell danger response, the big issue is that there's, you know, too much ATP being released into the, you know, extracellular space. You know, we don't want to, you know, you're talking about supporting the mitochondria all along and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, we don't want to do that. We don't want to exacerbate things. Well, again, my reply to that would be if ozone in was, was a bad choice if, you know, enhancing the mitochondrial uh, function through um, the ozone therapy was a bad choice. Again, we'd be seeing lots of flare-ups with the IV ozone therapy. And it's just something that I really, really don't see. So um, anyways, that's that's my opinion on that. Um, there was a question there about um, hemochromatase hemochromatosis as well. Um, I haven't had that that many patients with hemochromatosis, so I can't really speak to the very large volume of patients that I can with complex chronic illness receiving ozone therapy. Um, what I can say though is that with ozone, it is, you know, as an ox as a, um, a hormetic therapy or a hormetic stressor to the body, um, it does ultimately lead to more antioxidant production in the grand scheme of things. So I don't think that, well, it's, it's not contraindicated 
contraindicated in hemochromatosis. It's not listed as a contraindication um, with any of some courses that I've done, um, taken myself. But um, I also don't think that even on paper it would be something that would be, like it's certainly something to, you know, question. Um, but in clinical practice, um, and then when you look at the research literature, I, I don't think it would be a problem for folks with hemochromatosis. I've had some patients with hemochromatosis. I think a couple of them have done ozone, have not seen any issues there, but not an area I specialize in. So I hope this information was useful, and uh, thanks again to the person who asked these questions.